Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning to discuss the uh, research partnership platform project on competitive neutrality in conjunction with the launch of the book. I wish I was there with you. Competitive neutrality is all about the impact of government business in the market. Government can impact the market in a number of ways through the laws and regulations that it makes and the businesses that it conducts there. And government bodies competing with private companies have advantages because of their government ownership, even when competition laws apply to them. This can lead to pricing decisions which are not fully reflective of the cost and um, this affects decisions which are made by government, private companies and potential market participants. So this project is about how we can address these issues of competitive neutrality and the assumption is that consumers generally benefit from competitive markets. So what is a competitive neutrality policy? Well, a competitive neutrality policy directly addresses government business advantage in the market. Those market advantages might be direct and clear, but they can be more subtle and they need to be considered. These issues are particularly important in developing economies where government plays such a large role in the market. The, the more subtle distortions which government ownership of a business brings may not even be considered. And um, this is the case particularly where there is the acceptance of a continuing important role for government. Now there are a number of ways that competitive neutrality issues can be addressed. They can be addressed by corporatisation and accountability, which are important first steps in the process towards creating a level playing field for business and government. At the other end of the continuum, you can have a fully fledged competitive neutrality policy, which provides a regulatory framework for embedding these principles to foster the level playing field. And as I've said, uh, we assume that competition uh, maximises consumer welfare, so the level playing field is quite important. But competitive neutrality policy or looking at competitive neutrality can also provide other advantages for government businesses. They can be forced to be more efficient if they don't have those subtle advantages which government businesses often do, don't pay tax, may not have to make a commercial rate of return, may not have to go through regulatory processes when they are developing or building businesses. Uh, they can also um, be useful to assist government in assessing whether they actually should continue to be in that business. If a more transparent role is, is um, given to these sorts of advantages, it may be that without the advantages, government shouldn't be in that business at all. Now, policies to address competitive neutrality can be introduced in a number of ways. And that's a matter for each jurisdiction, depending on its development stage, the degrees of government involvement, and the ongoing role that government sees that it should have in the market. So the importance of industrial policy in a particular jurisdiction may be particularly important. But, as I've said, com competitive neutrality policy involves the implementation of steps to ensure that government businesses have no advantage in the market or that they only have them in limited and well-justified circumstances. The application of a competition law is a threshold issue here. And so this project complements the Fox Healy project on the state in the market that you'll also hear about today. If you look at the approaches to competitive neutrality around the world, the EU has an ex post approach, the UK has thoroughly explored the issue, and Australia has a very comprehensive model. 
But importantly, it's important to remember that competitive neutrality policy does not have to be absolute. It may not be appropriate in circumstances where it hampers the achievement of important social goals. Uh, but where claims of public interest are made, they should be subject to objective consideration and determined along predetermined lines. In some circumstances, the benefits of a competitive neutrality initiative would not outweigh the negative impact of its implementation, and this needs to be thoroughly considered. So what did this research partnership platform project do? The research partnership project on competitive neutrality looked at the role of government in markets, in particular jurisdictions, its impact on competition, whether competitive neutrality had been the subject of consideration, and how it should be either implemented or extended. A questionnaire was sent out in 2011 addressing these basic issues, and a copy of the questions which were asked is included in my book chapter. The second phase of the project was to take jurisdictions which had answered the initial questionnaire and ask them to select two government bodies and analyse those earlier questions specifically in relation to those government bodies. They were asked to identify any advantages or disadvantages of government ownership or control because of course there can be disadvantages including things like more scrutiny, more search and review processes and they need to be identified too. And then the second point there was, was there any net competitive advantage? Ultimately, participants from China, India, Malaysia and Vietnam completed the project in a comprehensive fashion, along with additional contributors who explored particular industries in those jurisdictions, most notably telecommunications industries. Finally, another group of contributors considered the issue of competitive neutrality from a global perspective, which had been, has been the subject of considerable comment and debate more recently. None of the participants in the project are OECD members. All are from developing countries. All have competition laws. So the book produced reflects the contributions of the participants and outlines their views about the role of government in the market. I guess I was invited to lead the project based on my knowledge of the comprehensive approach to competitive neutrality in Australia. And I'll speak a little bit about that now, but not too much. I've spoken about Australia's comprehensive competitive neutrality policy, uh, which arose out of our important HILMA reforms in competition law and policy in the mid-90s at the IGE and also at the RPP before. The OECD, for example, has said that Australia is the only country which has commitment and complete enforcement mechanisms in relation to competitive neutrality. And I've outlined the history and a number of the cases in the, my book chapter. But one recent important complaint in Australia that you might be interested in involves our new national broadband network. The national broadband network company, NBNCO, was established by the Commonwealth Government, our national government, to design, build and operate a wholesale only national broadband network across Australia because there were perceived market failures in that area. You know, we've got a very big country, very, very small pockets of not all that large population. Uh, you know, our population is only about 24 million people all up. Um, the government expected NBN Co, the company that was delivering the broadband, to operate in a commercial manner, charging for access to the network fibre, wireless or satellite to the point of interconnection and then private operators would do that connection. Retail service providers, 
they would transport their data from the point of interconnection to the point of presence in the location. In 2011, three competitors complained about the conduct of NBN Co. And um, the results were interesting because while certain of the complaints were unfounded, uh, complaints about the projected rate of return and whether it was adequately explained by community service obligations uh, which were undertaken by NBN Co required more attention by NBN Co, so the, uh, the uh, arbitrator said. And um, also um, there were issues raised about the um, date which had been projected for achieving a commercial rate of return and the, the arbitrator wasn't all that um, uh, convinced by the date or the rate of return. So I think that we haven't got competitive neutrality right in all respects um, and I think that this is, provides us with food for thought. Generally though, the Australian scheme has been um, seen to be effective by a, a Productivity Commission, our Productivity Commission review of the whole of Hilma in um, 2004 and 2005. It was noted there though that the majority of government trading enterprises still fail to achieve a commercial rate of return. Now, whether businesses would be operating for that long without achieving a commercial rate of return is another issue. A further development which I will just mention in respect of Australia is that we have a relatively new government who has implemented what they've called a root and branch review of competition law and policy. And that will be called the Harper Review and it's currently ongoing and it is expected to report by the end of the year. It is a very, very broad review it goes far further than just individual uh, provisions of our competition law, although there are some comments on that. But there's a real focus in it on the role of government in the market. One of the principles that's been espoused in the terms of reference is that government should not be a substitute for the private sector where markets are or can be, or sorry, where markets are or can function effectively or contestability can be realised. So clearly there is a bias towards non-government involvement in contestable markets. And the panel has been asked to examine whether government business activities serve the public interest, promote competition and promote productivity. And they include specifically the competitive neutrality policy. There are questions in there about whether it functions efficiently. The review will also look at introducing competition in areas such as education, health services and disability care and support, so that should be interesting. As I've said, there will be a report by the end of the year and um, I look forward to reporting back to you at some stage on that. As to the findings of the project that we've been dealing with, it's really impossible to fully examine the very detailed work provided by the wonderful contributors. As I have said, there were two writing on China, two writing on Malaysia, one writing on India, one writing on Vietnam, and there is a chapter on comp competitive neutrality in a global context. The other chapters really take a general or a telecommunications focus all of the authors made very substantial contributions and approached the issues in a very thoughtful way. They responded po positively to my comments and suggestions and I thank them very much for that. They probably got sick of hearing from me from time to time. But in summary, I can make the following comments, although I would urge you to read the really wonderful chapters that have been written by the participants. They were all developing countries at different stages of development. All of the jurisdictions recognised the impact of competition on market efficiency. They all had competition laws, but they were 
generally in the relatively early days of implementing and applying a competition law and enforcing it. All of them had reformed their government businesses to some extent, including by corporatisation, governance issues, transparency and accountability. And reform was ongoing in all of the jurisdictions which we considered to a greater or lesser extent. Just make some comments on individual jurisdictions here. China and Vietnam saw a continuing significant role for government businesses in the market. And really that's strongly influenced by the ideological perspectives which they have. And they saw a significant role particularly in industries that they considered to be strategic. And as the author from China said, it may be inappropriate for them to introduce a comprehensive competitive neutrality policy, although various aspects of competitive neutrality policy will improve market efficiency and improve the efficiency of players in the market. Malaysia saw a continuing role for government in the market, although it appeared that this was more from a developmental perspective at this point than an ideological perspective. But in all three of those jurisdictions I've just mentioned, state-owned enterprise reform is very substantial and ongoing, as is market reform. India has gone furthest in privatising and reforming its state-owned enterprises and is actually looking at implementing a policy sim similar to the policy which exists currently in Australia, although politically that may be difficult. It has really substantially reformed governance and accountability and has privatised a large number of former government businesses. In relation to Vietnam, the author demonstrates the legislative and administrative measures which authorities have in some, at some points used to create advantages for state-owned enterprises over private competitors in some industries, using the telecommunications industry as a case study. Uh, and a competition law was passed in Vietnam in 2004 and does apply to government business enterprises. Uh, but despite this, the author queries whether the law will be used as a sword or a shield to protect state-owned enterprises from foreign and domestic competition. Competitive neutrality issues on a global scale are more important given the growth of state-owned enterprises and their growing involvement in international trade. Whether this can be resolved by agreement remains to be seen. In conclusion, the issue of competitive neutrality policy will likely come under further scrutiny in each of the jurisdictions considered as they continue to reform and develop their state-owned entities. Positive competitive outcomes arising from ongoing reform should push governments to consider further reform. Even without the implementation of a comprehensive competitive neutrality policy, however, Governments should regularly, and at the very least, consider the issue of the impact of policy decisions, regulations, state-owned enterprise conduct and state-owned enterprise advantage on their markets if they truly wish to foster competitive conduct within their jurisdictions. And I look forward to continuing to study the progress of these jurisdictions in relation to competitive neutrality. Finally, I would like to thank various people for their assistance and involvement with the project. I would like to thank Mr. Hassan Kakaya for recognising the need for the project, his ideas and his very strong encouragement. I would like to thank Ebru Goche and Graham Mott for their continuing support, Ebru at the beginning of the project and Graham towards the end. And finally, I would like to thank 
the authors, uh, Professor Xu Xiying, uh, Mr. Alberto Gabriel, Ms. Juan Katina, Salvani Cham Songchit, Mei Chong, Pushpa Nair, Seema Gao, Nguyen An Chuan, and Graham Mott for their contributions by way of chapters and consideration of the issues. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the participants. I've learned a lot, and I hope to continue, as I said, exploring the issues going forward from the role of government in the market. Thank you.